Welcome to Real People, Real Voices. I'm your host, Reverend David W. Green, Sr., and I'm joined this evening because Pastor Moore had a personal emergency and is out by our producer, Mr. Curtis M. Baker. Good evening. Good afternoon. We do the fist bump, just like you and Pastor Moore do. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm not sure if I did it right. Oh, you got it. Okay. (laughs) Can we talk about the sponsors before we get too far into the show? Yes, yes, please. Okay, so Eskenazi Health is our sponsor where we are located today. New facility on 38th Street is a great facility. The Marion County Public Health Department, His Place Eatery, Tamiko and Associates Realty Group, the Marion County Sheriff's Office, Northside Window and Gutter Cleaning, Owls Modern Clothing and Shoes, Lavinia and Summers Home for Funerals, Rodney Step Music Productions, the Concerned Clergy of Indianapolis, the Baptist Minister Alliance, Healthy Minds, Healthy Indy, the Indianapolis Urban League, and IU Indianapolis are our fine sponsors of Real People, Real Voices. And we want to thank all of our sponsors. Thank all of you viewers that have joined us on uh, this evening. We are at this new site, new health center for Eskenazi on the east side. It's a phenomenal facility. We're excited about the work. Yes. We're excited just to be out in the community. Absolutely. We are out in the community with real people, real voices. Now, we've got a great show in store for you on this evening. We have the CEO of Overdose Lifeline, who's going to be with us talking about mental health, which is crucial, talking about harm reduction. So I encourage you, get you a pencil and paper. We got some great information coming as we hear from the CEO, but we first had to take a break and honor those great sponsors we got. We can always use more. And yeah, we can always (laughs) use more. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to Real People, Real Voices. We're excited to have with us on this evening the CEO of Overdose Lifeline, Ms. Justin Phillips. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Glad to have you with us. I want to begin, Justin, with you sharing with our viewers what drives you, what's your passion behind this work Mm -hmm. that you are the CEO of Overdose Lifeline? Mm Sure, absolutely, and thank you for having me and allowing me to share the story and to just provide resources to the community. Uh, I am a person who suffers from alcohol use disorder and I thought I understood addiction. I've been um, sober from alcohol use disorder since 1989, so a little bit of time. I had my children in recovery. I thought I understood addiction. I did not understand opioids. Mm -hmm. So when my middle child, Aaron, Uh, started experimenting and or taking legitimate prescriptions for pain because he was a student athlete, I didn't know. And he told me in October of 2012 that he could not stop on his own. He was using heroin and couldn't stop on his own. And he knew recovery was possible and that's what he wanted. But treatment wasn't really talking about opioids the way we do now and he lost his life to an overdose uh, almost a one year later. And because of that, because of what I thought I knew, because I felt I was a fairly well-educated person and understood addiction, I didn't know hydrocodone and heroin were the same. So because I didn't know, what did everyone else not know? And that's really why Overdose Lifeline exists. Wow, I mean, that's powerful. I didn't know. Yeah, because a lot of times we don't know. Don't know. And so now you, you've created this organization, Overdose Lifeline. Can you give our viewers a, a description of what you do, what resources you provide, want to provide to the community? For sure. So one of the things I first learned after Aaron lost his life was that there was this drug, uh, an overdose reversal drug. Sometimes we call it Narcan. Mm-hmm. It's really naloxone in its generic form. I learned about that 45 days later because of a a round table discussion through IMPD. Mm -hmm. And I realized, oh, I didn't know something could have saved Aaron's life. At the time, Mm -hmm. it required a prescription. 
so not a realistic situation that I'm going to go to my doctor and say, I'm misusing opioids, can I please have some naloxone? So the first thing we did was we worked to pass the law, which allows for naloxone, otherwise known as Narcan, to be available without a prescription. So we did that with um, then Senator Jim Merritt and other advocates to pass what we call Aaron's Law in 2015. Overdose Lifeline has been distributing um, f free to the public in a variety of ways since then. But mm -hmm. now, because of a great partnership with the state of Indiana, it's available on our website. You can go to the Overdose Lifeline website at the top of the page and you can request it to be sent to you anonymously. You can go to one of a variety of distributors in the community. You can find in a lox box places in public. You can find a vending machine uh, in, in places in public, including Eskenazi Health Emergency Department and their facility on 38th and Muller Road also has a vending machine. So that was its basic th thing, right? Access to naloxone, save a life. Because, you know, we say, if you're not alive, you can't find recovery, and we really want people to have recovery. Then we just started trying to fill all the other gaps around like the education that I mentioned earlier. If I didn't know, then maybe what you didn't know. So we built these education programs, and those are available online. Then we started working on addressing what needs to happen in the family. Addiction, unfortunately, substance use disorder, and co-occurring stuff like mental health that you mentioned earlier, Pastor Green. You, you know, it's sometimes intergenerational. So we now have programs for children. Mm. Uh, it's, it's a camp program where um, children with a family member can come for free. Mm. And it's every other month. And we teach them, you know, this, this is not your fault. This is not your fault. And you can have a different life. And we have a house for women who are pregnant, who mm. are trying to find their way into recovery. They can come to us. It's the only recovery supportive house. And the babies are born there. And then we have this whole community with these babies and these moms in early recovery. So. Wow, that's a lot of programming going on. Again, look in that camera and tell our viewers about the website, how they go. I'm assuming all of that those resources, whether it's for the children, whether it's for the pregnant moms. Yes. They can get to? Yes. If you do that for them. So it's overdoselifeline.org, very simple. And at the very top of the page in a red banner is the request the naloxone or find naloxone near you. But then all the rest of the programs are there on our website. And you're, you're always welcome to reach out via email, justin at overdoselifeline.org. Now, and there also is the place where you can find like training for Narcan if you don't, if mm -hmm. you're uncomfortable with, okay, I don't want to just order this thing and I don't know what I'm doing with yes, it. Yes. What's we, that look like? We have a video accessible on the webpage as well. It's a short video how to. Uh, in addition, we have um, a QR code that comes with the overdose reversal kits to help remember and instructions within the kit written instructions. So what are some of the vehicles that you're using to get this word out mm -hmm. of what, you know, outside of your website? What are we doing from an advertising standpoint? Yeah, well, that's a great question. Thank you. So we try word of mouth and mm -hmm. sometimes word of mouth works and sometimes word of mouth doesn't work. Okay. So we've implemented different um, opportunities. So grateful for this opportunity with you here today. We try to get out into the community, you know, mm -hmm. pandemic sort of made us yes. take some steps backwards mm -hmm. and now I think we're finally getting out into the community so for example today we have staff at Arsenal Technical Park okay. for the community so to come and get resources we try to do that we have some social media channels and um, always open to other opportunities okay because that's uh, really important absolutely like getting the word out because so many people all of us mm -hmm. pretty much we don't know, we don't and you know. don't know what you don't, don't know, know, right? Absolutely. And so absolutely. we start there because you could be seeing something but not recognize it, mm -hmm. and then you don't know what to do with it. Sometimes even when you start to see it, you don't know where to turn. And mm -hmm. so getting the entire community, if you will, right. empowered, educated, because I can say I've been through the Narcan training. It's not complicated. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to really? think it's, it's, you know, it's some, okay, this is, I don't want to mess up anything or hurt somebody right. when it's really a simple process okay. and it's far better 
that you're going to save a life versus not doing anything right. and watching somebody uh, to, to, to cease or die and be like, mm. well, I mean, I'm scared to do something, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So we got to get comfortable with that type of training because we're in this together. We need each other. Absolutely. Yes. We definitely need each other. Well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we want to talk about, you know, as a family member, you got a family member who's suffering some substance use disorder. What does that look like? How do I get through that? Because mental health issues mm -hmm. are plaguing our communities, mm -hmm. all of our communities. Yes. Mm -hmm. And one thing about it is economic levels is not separating people from these issues. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we got to talk about, you know, what do we do and what does that look like? Okay. Okay. So let's take a quick break and we'll be right back to hear from the CEO of Overdose Lifeline, Ms. Justin Phillips. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Real People, Real Voices. We're joined by the CEO of Overdose Lifeline, Ms. Justin Phillips. Mm -hmm. Justin, I want to spend some time on, because all of us need to be in this together. Yes. What does it look like as family members to support people who are struggling with substance use disorder? Because this thing has become extremely prevalent across all spectrums of our community. Yes. It's the most challenging part. I believe that stigma is such a big barrier for all of us, either the individuals who suffer or the family member. So much judgment in our culture around things we don't understand, things that don't come with a simple solution. Sometimes it takes someone seven times before they can get recovery. And it's a lot of resources. It's a lot of fear. Um, so we hide, we use denial as a protective barrier that doesn't help. Mm -hmm. So I think being, being willing to know that you're not alone mm -hmm. as a family member, that this is not anything that you caused as a family member and that there mm -hmm. are other people just like you and there are resources. Overdose Lifeline has a program called CRAFT, which is for family members and we have facilitators across the state in Marion County and Indianapolis that facilitate groups, that, and they're all attended by people who also suffer. And the, I don't want to miss this piece. Overdose Lifeline goes beyond Marion County. We do. We okay. are statewide. Mm -hmm. Statewide. Wow. What are you seeing in terms, because you've been at this for a little while, in terms of stigma, do you see a shift as we sit here in 2024? Mm, yes. Right? Compared to when I first got here, mm -hmm. when Aaron lost his mm -hmm. life, and even I suffered from that stigma and denial okay. and shame. It's better, but it's not completely better. People still don't understand that naloxone is available, that you can't be punished for having naloxone and giving naloxone to someone, that there is uh, people just like me who can help you and that you don't have to suffer alone. It's better, but we still have a lot of stigma. So explain to me what harm reduction, when you, mm -hmm. when you speak of that, what is that? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank mm -hmm. you. Harm reduction is a public health policy to approach to legal and illegal behaviors. Harm reduction is our seatbelt. Harm reduction is our vaccinations. Harm reduction for opioid use disorder is syringe service programs, which are highly stigmatized, access to medication for opioid use disorder, and naloxone is harm reduction as well. So reducing the harms so that we can get someone to recovery. Okay. And that's important because the stigma piece, mm -hmm. it's huge, especially in the minority community. Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, even in terms of maybe the religious community where mm. you've been taught, well, just pray about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And in reality, you need more than just praying about it. Mm -hmm. You need Jesus and a therapist in mm -hmm. some situations. True. So we got to be willing to be open to uh, a multifaceted approach right. as opposed to saying, well, we're just going to pray about it and then it'll miraculously disappear. Then we tend to operate in denial and then somebody doesn't get the help or assistance they need. And even as caregivers, mm -hmm. you feel a certain kind of way, right? What do I do with right. this? I'm praying about it. Yes. But how do I process all that's going on at the same time? Now, is there any programs you're part of 
that's targeting like the minority community yes, in this area addressing stigma? Mm -hmm. We do have a program through Overdose Lifeline um, that is called Macro B. We recently renamed it um, because Macro B is a difficult acronym that even I cannot say. But we recognized at Overdose Lifeline that we weren't getting naloxone into the hands of the minorities in the same way we were in, in the white population. So okay. we've been purposely trying to target the high zip codes where overdoses occur based on the Marion County Coroner's Office and EMS and getting into the minority community with specific communication around stigma and shame and the cultural aspects of not being willing to ask for help, which we all suffer from as humans. Mm -hmm. And again, the vehicles that you're using, I'm sure you're using the churches, grassroots organizations, Community uh, neighborhood association. Television, real people, real voices, yes. an opportunity. Uh, those are things that I'm sure, are, are you seeing a shift or are you? I think we've seen a shift in the number of naloxone and overdose okay. reversal kits that we've been able to distribute. Okay. Those numbers are up. We have been in to the neighborhoods and into the communities. It's data. So overdose death data is a little slower than okay. the actual um, anecdotal data that we have. And you know, everybody can get, uh, or anybody can get a box, right, for their business if they want to help mm -hmm. share and get out Narcan mm -hmm. fentanyl strips. Yes. Correct? Because mm -hmm. I yes. know we have one at our church okay. actually during the solar eclipse that happened mm -hmm. uh, earlier this month. We were giving out Narcan and fentanyl strips, made that available as a part of our community okay. day because we wanted to be able to share in the minority community, if you will, okay. saying, hey, let's get this out into the hands of people to help save lives, because those fentanyl strips are important as well. Yes. And so they are available too. They are available as well, yes. And if, if we can talk about fentanyl just a little bit. Please, sure. So um, fentanyl is also an opioid, mm -hmm. um, been used in outpatient surgical settings mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. Also uh, cheaper to manufacture illicitly mm -hmm. and stronger. Okay. So those people who aren't really our friends, we like to call drug dealers, know that fentanyl will hook you and make you come back and buy more of their product. Right. So they're putting it in almost every drug that is available illicitly on the street. So we have young people, mostly at risk right now, because they are purchasing an Adderall or a Xanax from social media or from their friend, and it's not a Xanax, it's fentanyl, and they're not prepared and they're overdosing. And wow. that's really one key message for parents and caregivers and um, family members is please don't assume, not my kid. And please have all open, honest conversations about these dangers with fentanyl and have naloxone no matter what, and fentanyl test strips. You can test what you have before you use. Wow. and make a different decision. Remove that stigma. Yes. Yes. We got to we got to we can do better and we mm -hmm. need to do yeah, better. Definitely. And we need to take advantage of the tools. Now because our time is nearby over. Once you look at the camera one more time, give them their website because these things are available through your organization. Yes. It's overdoselifeline.org. And you can also email contact at overdoselifeline.org or myself, Justin, at overdoselifeline.org. So we need to take advantage of this. Absolutely. Let's get the word out. I am so grateful mm. that you took time out of your busy schedule to come and share, not with just Curtis and I, mm -hmm. but with all our viewers because exactly. this information is critical. When fentanyl strips are available, when Absolutely. Narcan is available, when programs for family members who are struggling with somebody who's going through substance use disorder, when mothers are pregnant and struggling, when young wow. people are struggling, Overdose Lifeline has resources in place to help all of these areas. So I got it bookmarked, mm -hmm. overdoselifeline.org. <laughs> Absolutely. So I can go to it, I can send people to it, because it will, I'm seeing it make a difference. Absolutely. We have a box and we have people who are going to that box, getting mm -hmm. fentanyl strips, and Narcan. So wow. thank you for joining us. Thank we'll you. definitely have you back. We got to take a break. When we come back, Curtis M. Baker is going to switch hats. Go switch hats. And be a producer. <laughs>
Welcome back to Real People, Real Voices. I'm your host, Reverend David W. Green, Sr. And I'm your producer, Curtis M. Baker, sitting in for Dr. Wayne Moore as the co-host today. But let me do my work as the producer and talk about the sponsors real quick. Eskenazi Health, uh, Marion County Public Health Department, his place, Eatery. Uh, Tamiko and Associates, really the group, the Marion County Sheriff's Office, Northside Window and Gutter Cleaning, Owls Modern Clothing and Shoes, Lavinia and Summer's Home for Funerals, Rodney Step Music Productions, the Concerned Clergy of Indianapolis, the Baptist Ministers Alliance, Healthy Minds, Healthy Indy, the Indianapolis Urban League, and IU Indianapolis are our fine sponsors of Real People, Real Voices. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Ooh, and I learned so much today. You know, I didn't know that there was this thing called, you have to fit in all strips. Is this what, it, am I saying right. it correctly? Correct. That you can actually test to see if fentanyl is in the drug that someone had sold you thinking it was something else. Right. Wow. And they're available for anybody to get. Right. I mean, education is so important and fighting this. I mean, it could save lives, basically. And even in terms of the Narcan, a lot of times seniors are taking different medicines mm -hmm. and things can happen. And they that's why Narcan needs to be in every home. Every because home. you never know what's going to happen. We got to get the word out. We've got to do more and more and get the word out and address this stigma around substance use disorder, around the whole issue of mental health, around drug use. We've got to do better because we can save lives. Now, we've reached the end. So on behalf of WHMB Channel 40 and your Real People, Real Voices team, we want to say have a great evening. And, and remember, let's, let's talk, talk about, about it. it. Good night, Antoinette.